Hi everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at getting started with the RAD GAN View CTP, part of the Telerik RAD controls for Silverlight and WPF control suites for .NET XAML development. Today we're going to take a look at what it takes to create a new RAD GAN view in your project. Along the way to building a GAN view, we're going to explain GAN tasks as well as relations and see what it takes to get them up and running within your GAN view. Stepping into Visual Studio, we're going to take advantage of the Telerik Visual Studio extensions to create a brand new Silverlight project. From the installed templates, we'll select Telerik Silverlight, create a new C Sharp RAD Control Silverlight application, and we'll call this RAD GAN View dot getting started. As you can see, since I'm using the Q120 Tel release, we're creating a Silverlight 5 project, and everything else will remain the same. And from the Telerik configuration wizard, we're going to scroll down, find Gantt View, select it, and you'll notice that the other assemblies that we need, such as Telerik Windows controls, are already being added to our project. So we click Finish, and the Visual Studio extensions will take care of the rest. Now that Visual Studio is all loaded, we can see in the References dialog that we have Telerik Windows Controls, Windows Controls Gantt View, and Windows Schedule and Core. These are the three assemblies that you currently need for the Gantt View CTP to get everything up and running in your project. Stepping into XAML, we'll go ahead and define a new RAD Gantt View. So use a Telerik namespace, say RAD Gantt View, and give it a name, X Gantt View. We can now see on our design surface we have the start of something, but we're going to need to add a little bit more code to actually make this functional. But for that, we're going to step entirely into code behind so we can wire this up and get started with the Gantt view. In the code behind, we're going to utilize the loaded event. And here we're going to need to do three things. First, we're going to need to create a collection of tasks that we can add to RAD Gantt view. Second, we'll need to set the pixel length, which is determining exactly how wide our days or time spans are displayed in Gantt. And we'll also need to set the visible range, which lets the RadGant view know exactly what kind of viewport we want on our data. The first thing I'm going to want to do is define what date range I want to use. So we'll start by making a brand new date time. And we'll say 2012 to 1. So we'll start February 1st. Now we can set the Gantt view visible range. So x Gantt view dot visible range equals new visible range give you assembly reference for that. And here you can see we need a start and end. So we'll say d and d dot add months two. We'll spend two months on our day range. Next up is our pixel length. And here if we go into a telesense pixel length. We're looking for a time span. So we'll say new time span and here we can say one day, zero hours, zero minutes, and zero seconds. So now we have visible range and time span for pixel length. So the last thing we need to do is create some tasks. For this, I'm going to use an observable collection of Gantt tasks. We'll call it tasks. And now we're going to need to populate this with some tasks. Now the easiest way to do this for example sakes is use a couple of for loops. So we'll say i is less than 4, because I already kind of have an idea of how I want to set this up. And now we're going to establish a new Gantt task. gt equals new Gantt task. And here we're going to use one of the other constructors. You can see daytime start, end, and title. So we'll say d.addDays 14 times i. For the end, d.addDays 14 times i plus 14, so it's going to be effectively 14 days after the start date. And then our title will just be title plus i to string. Nice and easy. Now that we have our initial task though, we can add some children to it. So here we're going to add another loop. This time we'll use j, but in this case we're going to use gt.duration.days. So this way we're using the actual time span to create our loop. Just a little simple trick I'm using for creating the sample data. In this loop we'll say Gantt task, child gt equals new Gantt task. We'll build this one up manually. Child gt dot start equals gt dot start dot add days. In this case we'll just use our j value. Our child gt dot end will be child gt dot start dot add we'll say add hours 23. So we'll never quite overlap. For the title, we'll say child gt dot title equals child and we're going to use the i and the j, 
plus i to string j to string. Now we can go ahead and add this to the children collection of our original gt. And we can add gt to our tasks collection. Last but not least, xcantView.taskssource equals tasks. Now this is all set, we can go ahead and run this and see view in action. As you can see, view is loaded, but because we set the pixel length to a day, every pixel represents a day within the month. So we can't actually see a lot of what we have created as far as data is concerned. So now we're in our code, we can go ahead and fix this time span. We want to use one hour as our pixel length. Now we fire it back up, we can have a lot better view of what our tasks are. And all this comes complete with the ability to collapse tasks, so we can see all of our different parent tasks. We can also drill down and have the ability to select different items. But once again, we see the pixel length isn't quite what we're looking for, so we'll go ahead and modify this when we go back and add relations. So the first thing we want to change, instead of doing one hour, we'll go ahead and do 15 minutes. But now we want to do, like I said, add some relations to this. So here what we want to do is grab the grant task, that actually came before the current one. So we'll call this prev gt equals gt.children use that j as our reference point minus one, like I said the one before it, as gantt task. Now on this prev gt we'll use set relations. This is going to be a new list of relation and we'll add a new relation and the task will be our current child gt. So effectively all we're doing is saying that the previous one has a relation to the current one that we're building, but as long as we're on the second one is how we can do it. Of course, since using zero-based indexing, that's how that all works. So now with those few simple changes, we're going to see a much nicer time span as well as relations between our Gantt items when we load everything back up. And as you can see, this is now a lot more readable. So as we scroll across, we can see all the items related to one another. We can also collapse and get a better view of the different items that we have displayed in our Gantt view and it was all just that easy to set up. So I hope you've enjoyed watching Getting Started with RadGamp UCTP. Be sure to check out future videos in this series, which are going to include how we can use highlighting to make different Gantt tasks in the Gantt view pop, as well as how we can do some customization to our Gantt view. So stay tuned for more.